Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television. On this show, we get the right guests, ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. And it's the day before the big second leg. The grudge match between Ghana and Nigeria is coming up. So we're dedicating The Point of View to football. The Ghana Black Stars face the Super Eagles on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Will it be a victory in Abuja? Or will it be a bitter disappointment? I have a big panel to discuss that. We'll also talk about the five African qualifiers. Who's going to qualify between the other teams that are playing? A very exciting show comes up right after this. Different era, better result. Time has changed and time has brought Cal Charcoal Toothpaste, healthy gums, anti cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Kale Chocolate Toothpaste, Sankofa, Yenchi, Kale Chocolate Toothpaste, Happy, Happy Smile. Welcome back. So as you can see tonight, we're rooting for the Ghana Black Stars. So from the CK Akonot Stars to the Milo Stars, now they are the Otto Ado team. They played a pulsating 0-0 game against the Super Eagles of Nigeria on Friday. How good was that result? There's a big match tomorrow. We have our man in Abuja, Daniel Cranton. He will join us to give us a sense of what's going on. Is it true that the light went off before our press conference? Did the Nigerians give us a short ladder or we took our own ladder? What else is going to happen with the team? Are there any changes expected? Those are some of the questions we're asking tonight. I have a very big panel. In studio, head of City Sports, Fento Tahiru, Fento. Fento, good evening. Welcome to the show. Very good evening. Thank you. I'm looking sports. You are looking official. <laughs> it's a Monday, so... Fantastic. Yeah. I also have GFA Exco member Samuel Enim Ado, who we know to be affiliated with some of our best players as well. Samuel, great to have you. Good evening. Nice to have you too. Nice great, to great to see you. I'll be joined from Kumase by another journalist we talk to quite often from Moon to Me TV. He's called Collins Atapoku. We'll be joined from Abuja by Daniel Kranting. And also for the first time on the point of view, Ghana's ace left back Harrison Afo. These days he plays in the US. Some people describe him as one of our best left backs in a long time. They're all joining us tonight. And we have a few questions to ask. So how different is the Otoado? Black Stars, from what we saw with Milo and CK. That was our first round of questions. Then, is the 0-0 a good result or bad result? We'll ask about that too. And we'll also check about Abuja. Daniel Kranting landed in Abuja earlier today. We're scheduled to have a press conference. We don't know whether it was Doomsaw or Nepa, but obviously something happened there. We'll find out what's going on there as well. And then, we'll also check on what the other four qualifiers mean. There are four other big games. Egypt, is playing Senegal in the second leg. There's also Cameroon versus Algeria. There's Morocco playing DRC and there's Tunisia versus Mali. All of that coming up. So let's start by introducing those in studio first. So Fentu, I watched you last night talking about the team. Yeah. So just a quick take. Watch, watching one game of the uh, Otoado Black Stars, how do they compare to the Milo CK Black Stars? Better, worse or the same? Uh, I think it's a much. It was a much better performance mm. uh, from the team. I always say that uh, the reason a lot of Ghanaians were very angry about the exit from the Afcon wasn't necessarily because uh, Ghana exited the competition in the group stages. It was mm. basically because the style of football that mm. Milovan Rahevaj played was absolute rubbish. And you compare that to what uh, we saw under Otoado, even though they didn't win the game, you can sense that a lot of Ghanaians were quite satisfied with the performance. And there was a bit more desire, there was a bit more structure, a bit more systematic in the way they went about it. Mm. And I think overall, 
there was also a certain boldness about his team selection that we wow. didn't have under me. How long did he have the players? He basically trained them for three days. So he wow. had a light training session with seven players on the Monday. Then on Tuesday, they flew to Kumasi, had one training session. And then on Wednesday, another. Then on Thursday, another. And then that was all. And then uh, he played the game on Friday. So he didn't have a lot of time. And he recognized that. He said that he didn't have a lot of time with the team. And mm. he said that no national team coach ever has enough time with the team. So Is this not a new coach bounce that we see? You bring a new coach, everybody wants to impress. Everybody does better after one or two games. Back yeah, to, back right, yeah to there could be. But you also have to look at the changes he made and mm. the calls that he made even from the starting 11. Mm. You know, so it wasn't just like picking the same team and then every other player trying to prove a point or trying mm. to do better than before. Mm. You look at the, the starting lineup that he took. Uh, into that game against Nigeria. He named two teenagers in this attacking lineup, mm. Afenejan and then Ishahaku. Wow. Milova Rajavad had Ishahaku for all of the matches at the AFCON. He never played him um, when many people were calling for him to be played. Uh, you look at uh, the decision to even play a player like, uh, like Gideon Mensah. Mm. Milova Rajavad had Gideon Mensah for all the matches at the AFCON. He never gave him one minute. He stuck with Baba Rahman, whose performance a lot of people criticized. So there were a lot of bold moves that mm. he made in that particular game against Nigeria mm. that were credits to his own ability as a coach and so mm. you know it might be early days yet uh, but you could see a difference but you could see clearly that there was a system there was a passing even mm. the way we press the way we move the ball from the back because under minimum rahiva there was no system excuse me but really it was, but that bad. He, it was basically more or less like Fre Fre Kobo, to be honest oh. he, you know no at the afcon we played rubbish football. There was no system. You watched the game against against uh, against Gabon. It was almost as if score and then pack the bus. I hope the opposition doesn't score against Morocco in the first game. We didn't have a plan to score at all. Mm. And I always criticize the style of football. I can say right. that. I always say that you can tell that the team is improving, even if they are losing by the performance. All right. And the Milo, there was nothing to encourage me that mm. things were going to get better. Sami, from the GFA perspective. Do you agree that this was a much better performance than we saw at AFCON? Well, uh, it's, uh, it's a much better performance because um, mm. if you look at the expectations of Ghanaians and if you look at the enthusiasm in the game, even the, the tactic, mm. the way the boys were moving, the way, because movement in the game is very critical. Football now is about movement. Mm. If you can move well from the start, where you start. You see, the Nigerians also deploy the strategy that they won't let us start. They mm. know we are a good ball-playing team. So they always make sure they won't let us start. So they're pressing and so fouling. Whenever we pick the ball, you mm. see that um, uh, Amate will open up, um, Jiku will open up, uh, Idris will come to, the back. to pick the ball. Mm -hmm. So some people even blame Pate, but when you watch the game well, you can't blame Pate if you understand the game, because Pate was sandwiched with three people. Mm. But then when Idris Picks the ball, it's always difficult to give it to so Idrisu is Pate's partner in the in four, the, in the two, yes. three, one. Yeah, so Idrisu so comes, once Idrisu comes back to pick because mm -hmm. he drops back to pick and the, the wingers go forward. So whenever he wants to start, sometimes you see he, got, he comes to Amate, mm -hmm. sometimes he comes back to him, sometimes he goes to Jiku's side. Mm -hmm. So the coach has told them maybe sometimes in the first 10 minutes, use. And Gideon side in the mm. so they have a, a whole strategy. So you could see a system, you could, you could yeah. see that there was a system. That mm. one, that one is, was so is that good. why Otoado was brought? Is that why he was picked? Because we understand he did some work with Dortmund. Otoado seems to be what, what, what was the, the remedy? The because main, part of the, the GFA, main right? reason why he was picked first of all was because of the fact that he was more familiar with the club, um, the boys. Mm. He, had, he has been with them, he knows um, most of the boys. So um, he was. He will be able to understand how to know their strengths and their weaknesses and know how to make use of them. Mm. Apart from that, we also realized the time was so short. Like mm. the middle team, the same happened. The middle team, the time was so short. You needed somebody to come in quick fix, and sometimes you take that decision. And mm. who is familiar? And that's how come Milo got it. But Otto's uh, situation also came in the same way. But mm. it's paid off. People are happy with the way we played. Uh, what I can tell you is that. Football, you sometimes you will not get things the way you want because mm. you you will, not, you will be limited with time. But I, I can I can say that if we keep up with what we are doing, we'll have so the GF is optim. You like what you saw in the first leg. Exactly. You like what you saw. Yes. What role did the Chris Hilton play? He will be also having that. He will be like an analyst in the course of the game. But when it comes to before the call up, they will, they will engage each other. 
this is good, this is the strength, this is why we need this, this is our system, this is what the Nigerians play. For that one, I think they did that. But in the course of the game, when it comes to tactic, movement, what is the Nigerians trying to do? How do we vary our game and all those things? I think you will play a role there where you communicate so was with Was he on the bench stand. or he was in the stands? Um, he was on the bench. Yeah. Because he was on the bench yes. yeah. with so the they, team. They, so they discuss together. They, 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 communicate, they communicate and they will, they will agree to do a. So in terms of reading the game, there's Otto Addo, Chris Hilton, and, who and Didi, and then George Watson. Wow. Didi Dramani. Oh, so those are the four brains on yeah. our bench. Exactly. They call them the exactly. Avengers. Now that's high level because George Boateng, we know he's played at the highest level. Yeah. We know Didi Ramani is one of our best tactical minds in Ghana. We know what Chris Wilson has done with Brighton and all the teams, Newcastle. So these are the four who not just pick the team but also decide strategy as the game proceeds. Exactly. Yeah. And that's very crucial. That is one thing about football. If you don't have people who can read the game well mm. and vary the game and try to change tactics and try to change movement and all that, wow. you, can be, you can be in trouble. If you, if you look at this game, there were some instances that we, we had, we, we lost concentration a bit and they mm. nearly punished us. Mm. And those things are key. And mm. I'm hoping that will never happen. And if it doesn't happen in Abuja, it's possible some of what some of us have seen will happen. That a one nil or a one one. So we'll if we don't make mistakes, we think we'll beat the Nigerians. Or we'll draw. There are mistakes everywhere, but mm. you will limit it. And it's in, the, in games like this, one thing that. I'm happy about is the fact that the young ones, the ones who've not played before, who've not seen that, mm. what we wish for. I came here, I told friends that this is what I wish for. I want us to use the spirit of Baba Yala, the fans, and we got it. Mm. And I think I need to thank the fans of Kumasi, the media. Kumasi, Kumasi. Came, came through for it us. It was <laughs> super. And it was, it, 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 it over, I was we were overwhelmed. Yeah. And it's like, Charlie, thank you, Ghana. You did it for us. And we're so wow. proud. We are going to. I told you we're going to re um, resurrect the bring back the love from yeah. that day. Wow. And everybody accepts that. That day. Means let let me go to Kumasi and see if uh, Atapoku can give me a, a more uh, accurate rendition. So he's with one to me TV, a journalist we know from Kumasi. So a name is saying Kumasi brought back the love. Atapoku, thanks for joining us on the point of view. Good evening. Thank you for having me, Bernard. Good evening. I can see your lips moving, but your mic, your mic is off. So please put it on. <laughs> Fantastic. Over here, the mic is on. Great. I was expecting to see you in a Black Stars jersey, but, but no problem. <laughs> How did Kumasi turn up for the Stars? The stadium was full, but give me a sense of the atmosphere and what the Kumasi fans did to help the Black Stars on Friday. We've not seen something like this before. Wow. All this while. And according to the elders, the last time we had a similar atmosphere was when we played against... Egypt. Oh. Broco in the qualifiers for the 1998 World Cup, where we drew shots ahead to Mustafaji and Sahalidin for us too. For them, even though the Black Stars went behind, they still rallied them on from start to finish. And it was a similar case. In Kumashi, in the first 15 minutes, they will make noise. When the goal is not in, then they sit out. But this time round, they cheered on the Black Stars from start to finish in a jam packed Stadium where people didn't care what was happening to them, and that should it was like an incredible atmosphere. Then it was incredible. You've never seen something like this in a long while. Why were the Kumasi fans so passionate? Was it an appeal that was made? Was it Otunfo who said they should come out? What led the Kumasi fans to come out in such numbers for this game? Well, as soon as the decision was made that the decision was coming to Kumasi, we were all summoned and told that we are not journalists anymore. We are Ghanaians, so we must make sure the black stars come to Kumasi and get the atmosphere that would propel them to win. So we started speaking about the need for people to come to the stadium and the fact that the black stars team is not good enough. So if these people don't come, the Nigerians will overwhelm us. So everybody came to the stadium with a sense of responsibility and not entitlement. So they mm. thought that look, they had a part to play. So when we started in on the last day of training on Thursday, that our fan was coming, and then we saw 3,000 people at the stadium to watch the training, it was going to be a jam packed stadium on Friday. The Kumasi crowd historically is kinder to teams than Accra because Accra, if you, if you are not doing well, they will let you know. But I'm told that it wasn't that easy initially for some of the players. So just give me a sense of how they cope with some of the bad play. For example, there was almost a penalty against Ghana. How did the fans take that? 
there was, there was a mistake I think one defender made which almost cost us had it not been for VAR. Did the Kumasi fans at any point get angry? Did they start chanting Ofu and things? Or throughout the game they were for the team? So they supported, but at some point they made yeah, the pleasure. They were at network. And that was the issues that we could all recall. Fourth corner kick taken by, and then they started shout. Hello, there. Go ahead. So you're saying on the fourth corner kick, they started getting angry with the poor set pieces. Yes. Jordan Ayu for his third piece, poor set piece delivery. And then he had another free kick on the right hand side, and it was poor. And then there was a moment when they felt that a quick pass could have gone, and Kudus held on to the ball for long, and the opportunity was gone. And they were frustrated with that too. So there are a couple of occasions that they made their frustration known, but it was quite consistent with the play of Jordan and you. They were just fed up with this lack of quality delivery from such play. Mm. I'll come back to you on the performance itself, but stay with me. Thank you. Let me cross over to Harrison Afo, who's a former player of the Black Stars. Very quick left winger. What his initial thoughts are on this first performance? How does this team compare to the Milo team? Harrison, thanks for joining us on The Point of View. Good evening. Thanks for coming me. Exactly. Fantastic. You, you have played in the team before, so I don't know how analysing your colleagues would, would, would mean, but what did you make of our first leg performance against the Super Eagles? Well, um, thank you for your question. And then, um, I think first, I'll, I'll say a big shout out to Kumasi um, for the love and then the support. Um, and then um, the first game, we all knew what was um, at stake and then the expectations, you know, especially when it's when it comes to black stars, you know. So um kudos to the guys, even though we couldn't like get the three points, but um I believe in the guys and um I hope uh, they will they will make things happen in the second leg. But um with the comparisons about coaches, I mean everybody has his own um, style of play. So for me as a player, I guess like psych myself and then go into the game, you know, as what the coach wants me to do on the field of play. So I believe that's what uh, my colleagues did. Um, mm. Do you like what you saw? Do you like what you saw on Friday in Kumasi with the players, the way they were playing, their body language and everything? Do you like what you saw? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the passion alone um, makes a lot of sense, you know, because um, um, the young guys were really like, uh, hyped and then they really went into the game really well. It was a physical game, so um, I, I really enjoyed myself. I really liked what I saw. As I said earlier, it was unfortunate we didn't get the three points, but all hope is not lost. I believe um, we can still win in Nigeria. Sometimes foot, uh, football fans think the players don't care. Tell me what players think about when there's a big match like this. We, the fans, we just want you to beat Nigeria because they are our biggest rivals. We want to go to the World Cup. Is it important to players too? Or you guys, sometimes you're thinking about your club, you're thinking about money. What, what do the Black Star players think about when such games happen? Everybody cares. If this is, this is a job for us. You know, this is, uh, this is what we do for a living. And then this brings out, uh, it puts food, uh, food on our table. So, there's no way a player will go into a game and then will say, I'm, not, I'm going to play for, for fun. Before, we used to play for fun when we were kids, but now it's a job. So, and we get paid for, for this. Even the fans get, um, get angry when we lose, How much, let alone a player. So, you could tell, like, we all care about everything. But um, sometimes in soccer, anything happens. So, as soon as it happens, you just, like, take it in good feet and then move on. Life still must go on. So I believe um, we just have to um, keep uh, motivating ourselves and then uh, be stay, always stay positive. You know, that will make us um, go far. Before we take a break, I just have a final question for you. When you watch the team, which players excite you? I know that right now in the world of football, your position, left back and right back are very offensive. If you go to Liverpool like this, their left back and their right back are like <laughs> their most offensive players. When you look at our team, what excites you about the players? Which, which of the new players do you have expectations about when you see this new team? Well, I think um, all the guys did well, but um, I think we just need to um, keep supporting them, motivating them, 
um, especially um, Afina, who is um, like a, a new a new guy in, who is young. We di- we need to um, give him the support, and then um, also I mean, give him the right you know um, talks and make sure he goes into the game with the right with mentality and then attitude. Also, um, Kudus uh, is one guy who who needs to uh, be ready every time. When he stays fit, I think um, he helps the club a lot, um, the machine a lot. So um, we need to, I mean, keep supporting them. Also, Gideon Mensa, like a couple of them, all, all of them. Mm. Of them. So we just need to, um, I, I know you've played in many African countries. When we come back, I'll ask you about what it is like to play an away game before mm-hmm. a hostile crowd. The stadium has 60,000 people. Everything is against us. What does that do to a team? Does that motivate or scare them? I'll come back to you, so please stay with me. This is the point of view. Tonight is a night of soccer. My guest, a large panel. I've spoken to Atapu Queen Kumasi. I have Samuel Mado here in a crowd with uh, Fento Tahiru, head of sports. Harrison Afo joining me. When I come back, the first thing I'll do is I'll go to Abuja and speak to Daniel Kranting. He landed in Abuja into some level of doom. So I don't know whether it is a, a, a football-induced doom so, or it's just an, whether the light is back. Then we'll talk about the game against the Eagles in the second leg and what we must do to win. Send us your thoughts. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back tonight. We're rooting for the Black Stars. We have a big game against the Eagles tomorrow. If you're watching this on Tuesday, it's probably a couple of hours before the kickoff at 5 p.m. And we're asking what the Black Stars would do. Let me go to Abuja. Daniel Crantin landed there earlier today. How is the place? How are they gearing up for the match? Have they started any diabolical things? Danny K, good evening. If you can hear me, thanks for joining us on The Point of View. Good evening, Bernard. I'm very good. You look very fine. Is there light in your hotel? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's light in my hotel. But um, the interesting thing is that when I touched down at the, the Abuja airport, the lights went off four times before the Black Stars arrived. So I waited there for an hour for the Black Stars to arrive. And then uh, within that hour, the lights went off four times. I counted. Wow. Very interesting stuff. Could it be because of our game or this is... Did you ask whether it was a normal occurrence or whether this was a, because of the game? Um, I was I was reading the reactions, and if you read the reactions, you can tell that it was normal. You see, usually in Ghana, when the light goes off, uh, people will shout, oh, when it comes out, it's A, because of excitement. Um, but at the airport, the lights went off. Everybody was going about their business as normal. I was like, oh, it's very normal. <laughs> okay, right over there. So I just got the hint, and I saw that, okay, this is um, probably a part of their daily <laughs> lives in, in, mm. in Nigeria. So what people are saying about the press conference and the light going off before is not really the case. Because I'm told the light went off before the Ghana press as well. Yes. Um, so whilst the Black Stars were training, um, just as so they finished like majority of their training session and they were going through the um, set piece training. That's like the last thing they do before the end. And then the lights went off. So when the lights went off, they just decided to start uh, Shin Jama. And then um, that was around the same time that we expected the, the head coach and then Gideon Mensah to come in for the press. So it was around that time where the lights went off. And the interesting thing was that it didn't just go off and come off. It was going off and come Typical doing so, like off on, off on, off on, like about six or seven times um, in about five minutes. And then finally we had a power restore and we could continue. With so this was the press. training at the exact time the match will happen because the game is at 5 p.m. So this is the away team 5 p.m. training that this happened. Yes, the last training session before the game tomorrow. Um, but the good thing is that the, the team had basically finished training. And they had, they had done, gone through their tactical training, through their drills. It was down to set-piece training. They started with about five, ten minutes into that, and then the lights went off, and it interrupted that. Um, what what, is the, the, what are the Nigerian stuff? media saying? What are the Nigerian fans saying about this game? What are their expectations? Um, so, Ben, it's very interesting. Um, when I was in Ghana, we all felt that um, over here, people were hyped up for the game, people were preparing for the game. But the, the, the reality in, in Abuja is very different. A lot of people are very nonchalant about the game. They don't, they don't really care. People that we've spoken about or spoken to about the game in Abuja don't really care. And 
there were a couple of journalists we spoke to asking them why people were having that sort of um, attitude towards the super eagles and they said that's basically it in abuja people in abuja don't really care about their football they you need to they need to be forced to go to the stadium and i didn't believe that until the end of the nigerian press where an announcement was um, given in the press room um, from the sports minister telling journalists that they were going to give them free tickets for, uh, to invite their family and friends to the game so it gave everybody that indication that um, they were probably struggling to sell tickets and um, wow. tickets are not sold out by this time exactly and then they're a bit worried because we're speaking to a couple of journalists and they were telling us one guy put his word down he said he could bet me all the money i have that the 60,000 will not be full tomorrow um, unless they go and open the, uh, the gate for france to come in free that's that's how um, bad bad it is uh, um, hey, that means abuja, abuja like, they are they are that about people power <laughs> but do you yeah, know why that, do you know why the game was sent there because i know they usually play in different parts they have lagos they have some parts of the east calabar and things do you know why they chose abuja for this game um, so the indication was um, they played the, during the qualifiers, they played at, at a number of different places. But this is a, a newly renovated stadium. It's 60,000, the biggest stadium they have in the country. Um, so, and of course, it's also the capital. So they thought it was nice to crown off the um, FIFA World Cup qualifying series at home in the capital in front of um, the Abuja fans. But when you speak to journalists and you speak to people there, it, it, the, the, you get an indication that initially they thought this decision uh, would pay off. They thought that bringing the, the, the game uh, of this magnitude against Ghana to Abuja will pay off. But funny enough, I don't know if it's down to promotion. I don't know if it's just down to the um, attitude of the, uh, the people in Abuja, as the journalists are saying, they are nonchalant about football. But you can tell that there's a genuine worry that tomorrow the fans might not come in their numbers to cheer the team. Mm. It seems to me as if the, the Nigerian team struggles at home. When I watched the qualifiers, they didn't do that well at home. Is, is there a concern there that they probably missed their chance by not scoring in, in Kumase? Yeah, that's, that's another worry over here because a number of people we've spoken to, um, journalists, sports analysts, are talking about how uh, much they wish they had scored a goal um, in, in Kumase. Because in the qualifying series, if they didn't score. It's not that they were just not winning at home. They also didn't score a lot of goals at home. And, and that's where their worry is. Despite um, the flurry of attacking players that they have, the quality of attacking players that they have, um, they have struggled to score at home. And um, this is under two different coaches. Um, of course, they blanked against Ghana. They blanked against Tunisia. Um, they scored just one against Egypt. In fact, in the group stages in the AFCON, they were not that prolific going score. They were nice to watch. They were creating chances, but in terms of finishing the ball in the back of the net, they were not doing that. And that's the worry because it's under two different coaches. Gernot Roth took part uh, or took charge of the first half of this, and that's the six games um, in the group stages leading up to this playoff. And then uh, Austin Eguavon is taking over this. Another thing that also is worrying them is uh, Ghanaians always go at our coaches. We Everybody has their reservations about coaches. But the Nigerians are not convinced about Augustin Iguavon. They say he's too predictable. They say his, um, his attacking tactics or his attacking formation is basically um, out wide. He's, he, he doesn't, if you're able to cut out the supply out wide, he doesn't have any other plan B. He doesn't have any other plan to be able to um, cut open defenses. And per what they saw in Kumasi, the fact that Ghana were able to cut our supply from the wings, and um, we had Dennis Odue, um, in conjunction with um, uh, Jordan Ayu and then um, Gideon Mensah having a very good game that day, um, which caused the likes of Moose and Simon Chukwese to have a very poor game um, going forward in, 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 the, in the game against the Black Stars in Kumasi. They are very worried that if Ghana repeats a similar game plan, they will struggle to create chances and struggle to score. And also, when you speak to people, the fact that the away goal rule is now in play, they are mm. very scared because... And they know that once Ghana scores a goal, they will have to score two goals to win. Once Ghana score a goal, it means that Nigeria now have to win the game. A draw will not be enough because a score draw will favor Ghana. So there are a lot of um, worries around when you, when you, when you speak to mm. um, people over here. The same way we are here and we think Nigeria are favorites, that's the same way they are here and they also think wow. um, Ghana can upset them. All right. F finally, what is the mood in Ghana camp? You saw part of the training. You were with the team. What's the camaraderie in the team? What, what are the, what, just give us a sense of the vibe in the Ghana team. Um, it's, it's very interesting. Um, look, they are so relaxed and you would not expect them to be this relaxed. Um, wow. You can tell, even in the press conference, 
Um, Gideon Mensah was asked a question about the pressure. He, they asked him what it would mean if Ghana didn't qualify for the World Cup. And he said they are not thinking about not qualifying for the World Cup. They are thinking about placing Nigeria tomorrow and getting the result. That That's is where their mind is. So if tomorrow by this time we don't qualify, then you should ask him the question. But for now, they are not thinking about um, not qualifying wow. for the World Cup. And you can see they all smiles going about their pieces. Um, with, look, it's, it's, it's nice to see that they are not putting too much pressure on themselves. On the other hand, when you listen to um, the Nigerian press conference with the Guavon, they repeatedly had to assure people um, we would win. Don't worry, we are going to get the result. You can tell that there's pressure on them. You can tell that they know that if they don't qualify, it will be an upset. Whereas in the Ghana camp, they are like, we've played very well in the first game. Otuado said it himself. He said he played very well in the first game. He's happy that people acknowledge that. And that's what Fence was alluding to in his earlier statement. People acknowledge that the style of football was different from what we saw under Milo Van Rijvaert. We were more expansive. We played with a bit more passion. And he's happy that people have acknowledged that. So it's, an, it's a building process. They are not really thinking about um, failure if they don't qualify for the World Cup. And um, that was positive to see from the body language of the Blasters players. Wow. I'll, I'll come back to you. Let me just take some quick reactions around the table. I, 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 this is interesting. The, the Abuja Stadium may not be full. This is the Nigerian fans are not as optimistic, and we are sitting in Ghana saying, Oh, Nigeria have so many strikers and things. But this is serious, yeah. That, to be honest, I mean, it is not so surprising. Mm. We interact with Nigerian journalists on a daily basis, mm. and everything Daniel said about the Abuja Stadium has been a major issue of concern right from the start, right from the very day mm. they decided the game would be played in Abuja. And it's not like they had a choice because all of the matches from the group stages were played in Lagos. The Lagos pitch was declared not good enough. Mm. And Nigeria came up with a strategy, and this is credit to their sports minister. They came up with a strategy where mm. he asked uh, big entrepreneurs in Nigeria to adapt the pitch. They called it the adapt the <laughs> pitch. Adopt the pitch. Adopt the pitch. Wow. And guess what? It was Aliko Dangote who adopted the Abuja pitch. Wow. And by the time the World Cup qualifying playoff matches came around, the mm. pitch was in pristine condition. They decided that this is an excellent condition. Let's take the match there. It wasn't so much of um, this is where we get the most support. It was, wow. it was a more a case of, okay, this is the facility that's good enough to host a match. So they mm. took the match there. And I have seen reports from uh, Nigerian journalists who say that the sports ministry has also hired as many as 100 buses. Mm, to convey around, people. Around, yes, around Lagos. When we were looking and, for tickets to Kumasi, we were not getting Yes, and then they have bought 20,000 free tickets. Serious? To be distributed to people in Abuja. And many people uh, still believe to not be interested. So it really does. Uh, there is the, so there are really is a genuine concern about them not feeling that 60,000. So, Sammy, so when we are here saying bring uh, back tomorrow. the love, even with the low love we have, Kumasi, we are not getting tickets. <laughs> then when the love comes back, I mean, are, are you shocked hearing such things? I'm not shocked. Uh, Faint knows my position and I've stated it clearly that this is the reason why we would eliminate, we will qualify ahead of Nigeria. The first problem they have had, now I can speak one of it. I can go, I can yeah. open up a little. Mm. They have too many, those too, too many strikers and they've never been scoring. Mm. They say we don't have a striker. They should go and check. That's nine or whatever strikers that they have. They have not been scoring. And there's pressure on them in their country more than us. Mm. And at the same time, their people don't even believe in them. Mm. And you see, Ahmed Musa said they are going to break, break the jeans of mm. our dominance. Why would you say so that? So there's a psychological barrier as so well. They, and thank God we didn't concede. The way, I don't know how my BP went when they, they, got, they nearly got that penalty. <laughs> and that's one, that's, Charlie, let's give credit to uh, Walakot. That save with his leg, was with it the left feet, one? Yeah, the, Moses Simon. Was mm. it the right foot? Or Both the, feet, actually. Because goalkeepers, go and check the great goalkeepers that we, I accept. I know many people accept that good, good, good goalkeepers. They use their... They are, they are, they are, they are. Either they are led, the yes. right one or the left one to save. Yes. Moya, Peter Schmeichel, yeah. even the, more the great people. ones, they use the, yes. the hair. So he was able to do that because that ball was a goal. Mm. And then the penalty. Mm. And that one with the number 10, the one who in the first half, we had a, he had a chance and he just blew it away. Yeah. Yeah. So the moment they didn't score, I said the thing I psychologically, said. Psychologically, psychologically, yeah. So which means that there's a, the, a certain pressure on, on them. them and, we can ride on that. Mm. And I am believing that we are going to really ride on are that. Are you thinking about tactics or more psychology and motivation? When the Black Stars play Nigeria, to some people say it's like Haskotoko. It doesn't we, it has we, go according we, to form. Is it true? We are having the three. The motivation the boys have gotten, I was ending with, on that one, on mm. that note, that the young ones who have not even played before, Afinajan, look at how he played. Mm. 
So now what again does he want to see? Mm. So now you're going to tell that, oh, I can go and, and mm -hmm. don't be surprised he can score. Don't be surprised even the one people were um, attacking, Jordan. Mm. They were attacking that. He didn't do that and Atta was saying it and all those. You will not be surprised he will score a goal. Mm. Because it is, up, it is time that he will also say that, no, let me prove something. Yeah. Mm. And he's motivated to do something different. Mm. And these are positives for us. And mm. the young one, Fatao and Co, they've not, they now say that, oh, no, these guys, they, are, they, they said they had that, who, um, they couldn't even shoot. They They've matched even, them in the first leg. So football. their level so of they are confidence not, is high. And then the pressure, and like Gideon said, it's super. And Dennis Odui, man, mm. guys. <laughs> Dennis Odui. <laughs> let me, let me ask Odui Harrison, let me ask Harrison for sure. about Dennis. Harrison. You are one of our best left backs we've seen in a long time. Right backs. Back. Right backs. I know he plays both sides, actually. Yes, he does. What did you make of Dennis Odoi's performance uh, in the first leg? Sorry? What did you make of uh, Dennis Odoi's performance in the first leg? The left back for us. Right back. Right, right back. Sorry, oh, the right, right back. Right back. Yes. Oh, he, he was okay. He was good. He was good. You know, because um, I think um, that's his first game for us. And then um, he came in with a lot of um, good passion, you know. Um, was able to join attack when, when, whenever we needed him. So I mean, he was he was good. He was good. We just need to give him more time and then um, keep supporting him. Mm. How important was it for us to keep a clean sheet? You are a defender. When you look at our back four, Jiku, Amate, and then the two on the on the on the wings. What did you make of our defensive performance and their connection with the goalkeeper? Yeah, I mean the uh, communication level was high, and then. Um, Big shout out to the goalkeeper, um, Bolakot. Um, he made a great save, you know. That um, that, that was so important because um, they nearly scored us, as uh, Mr. Samir, uh, Samir Nim said. So, big shout out to him. We need to um, keep improving on that, not only the defense, because um, in soccer, uh, defense starts from attack, you know. When you have good um, attackers and then they start defending well, they are, everybody start defending well as well. So, mm -hmm. they should keep going. Let me just ask about Africa and playing at home and away. Mm. At home, it looks like there's a lot of support. That could lead to pressure. So in Kumasi, the fans are singing. They want you to score. Versus if you play away. I know you've played some very interesting World Cup qualifiers away. You've done Sudan. You've done all kinds of places. How does it work? Is it easier playing away when the home fans of the opponent expect more from them? Or is it easier playing at home? Okay, um... I don't know about other players, but I'll talk for myself. Um, for me, it's more easier to play home, you know, because you get your fans, you get your loved ones like behind you. Um, and then I'm um, talking about away games. Anything can happen, you know, the um, intimidation and then uh, stuff you go into into the game before you go into the game. It's very difficult, like um, traveling and everything. You know, talking about Africa, it's very difficult. So. I mean, you, you as a player, you need to psych yourself before the game. Because um, in Africa, we don't get things on a silver platter. So, I mean, mm. you just need to I mean, psych yourself and then make sure um, mm. you are ready to go. You know, like when you, you should be like more than 100% um, ready. You know? What does a Nigeria game mean? And what, what's your advice to the players? It, of course, we the fans, we think Nigeria is our biggest game. Is that the same for you, the players? Is the Nigeria game our biggest? Every, every game, every game for a player is, is, is a biggest game. It's a big game for every player, you know, not only Nigeria. But um, talking about this game, this is a World Cup qualifier, and um, I know what it means. You know? We want to go to the World Cup again and then make history. So, I mean, um, my little, little advice is this: they should just calm down, you know, they should, like, be themselves and then play their normal game. Mistakes will come, sure. Um, but... I mean, they should write on the mistakes and then make sure they will deliver because um, it's not going to be easy. And then um, I, I believe we're going to get the first goal and then we keep writing on that. Oh, you think we'll get the first goal? That, that's good. But if we get the first goal, it means that even if they equalize, we qualify. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you, you actually believe we'll qualify? Yeah, we, we just have to go. We just have to get a first goal. You know? When you get a first goal, you get more confidence and then you play your game. Wow. We'll come yeah. back. This is still the point of view. We're, we're talking the World Cup qualifiers. We'll take predictions when we come back. There are four other games that are taking place. So the times have changed. So our game is now five. Don't forget on Friday, our game was the last game. But now our game is the first game. There are some very interesting matchups. It looks like the North Africans have taken a good lead because Tunisia got a one goal against Mali. Mali has a very good team. 
The Moroccans had a 1-1 draw at DRC. Algeria had a 1-0 away at Cameroon. Egypt has a one goal at home to Senegal. We'll talk about that when we come back. Plus predictions from my panel. What is the predicted score for Ghana, Nigeria, 5 p.m. Tuesday? Stay with us. Welcome back. Tonight is a soccer night on the point of view, and we are powering the Black Stars to victory against the Super Eagles. My guest, Atapoku, on Zoom in Kumasi, Daniel Kranting, is joining us from Lagos. Harris Enafol is in the US. I think he's in Seattle. Charlotte. 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 North Charlotte. Carolina. <laughs> okay, Charlotte, North Carolina. And I have Samolini Madu here in Accra in the studio with a uh, friend with Harry Friend. So I want to go to Atapoku and just take his prediction for the Nigeria game. Atapoku, Thanks for staying with us. You've delivered a zero zero for us in 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 Kumasi. What what are we going to do in Abuja? What is what when you look in the bottle? What do you see? <laughs> one one. One one. Yeah. Are we scoring first or they are scoring first? We are scoring first. We are scoring first. Do you know who is scoring Abu? Jordan Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Then, then this one you consulted, Pao. Jordan, are you? Yeah. yeah. What is the feeling among Kumasi fans after the game? And what are they saying? Because I know you, you do shows, people calling. What are people... Are, because uh, uh, Daniel was telling us the Nigerians are not that optimistic. There's pressure on their team. They don't even think they can fill the stadium. Whereas I'm told Ademola Lukuman said he has never seen anything like he saw in Kumasi in terms of the turnout. What are Kumasi fans saying now that we have a second leg coming up? They are literally begging black fans once they do, that will be enough to frustrate the Nigerians and get something out of them. So, repeat, that's all they are asking for. They felt that performance was one that came out of their heart. They really wore their heart on their feet. If they do that again, certainly they are going to get a result that will qualify as to Qatar. Wow. So, you are optimistic. Kumasi fans are optimistic. Let me turn to uh, Daniel in Abuja. So, Daniel, what else do we need to know ahead of the kickoff at 5 p.m.? Um, Bernard, one thing I forgot to mention was um, a very interesting thing I picked up uh, speaking to a couple of journalists. And um, they said this team, has, the relationship this team has with the public is very different from previous Nigerian teams. And they call this team a foreign team. Ooh. They say they don't have enough access to the team in terms of interviews. They are not able to get that relationship with the team. So they feel a bit alienated from the team. And what topped it off was um, per the rules, the last training session before the game, the first 15 minutes is supposed to be open to the press. But the Super Girls asked for it to be a closed door session. So even Nigerian journalists didn't get to um, witness that training session. And that completely pissed them off. They were really angry with um, that decision. And it just went on to buttress that, that point that they were making. The fact that the public feels very alienated from this team. The fact that there are a lot of um, foreign-born Nigerians in this team, um, they don't have, when they come in town, they are not allowed to have access to the team and things like that. So um, that's also another thing that is playing against the Super Eagles team. But there are also a group of people who are very confident um, going into this game. But look, the, 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 the body language I saw from the Black Stars, it, it gave me a lot of confidence from, from, from this. And when you see a group of people who have such a huge task ahead of them um, in just under 24 hours, and they look so relaxed, and going into it, you can only feel positive about it. You can tell that they are not allowing the pressure to get to them. And that will, if, if it continues like that, that could play um, to Ghana's advantage. And that's what Atapoku is saying. If Ghana is able to get the first goal, I really don't see Nigeria coming back. When you look at um, history, how they've handled pressure in recent times, you look at them going down a goal against Tunisia, how they feel to recover. They went on to get frustrated, got a red card in Iwobi. If you go back to the last game that even qualified them to this stage of the playoffs, it was at home against Cape Verde, where they, um, they were playing at home. They needed to avoid defeat. They scored first in one minute. Then after six minutes, Cape Verde equalized. And it was a very nervous display to the final. And in fact, it took a very good save in the last minute um, before Nigeria were able to um, escape with that 1-1 draw. So playing at home... They don't really handle that pressure well. And when you look at the Black Star side, the fact that they are bereft of pressure, they are very calm. 
you have confidence going into the game that Ghana may be able to get the result tomorrow. So you are bringing back at least one goal? Oh, we'll score. And if they are not lucky, if Ghana scores early in the first half, if they are not lucky, we can finish the, the first half 2-3 minutes. Hey, you. <laughs> Sorry, your view is, your view is high. Who, 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 where is the goal coming from? You see, I, I, I have not come to Abuja to come back to the field. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I have I'm not gone to Abuja. <laughs> you, you've not travelled to Abuja to come back empty-handed? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I'm bringing the ticket tourist. to Qatar. You're bringing the ticket to Qatar? Yes, we are going. <laughs> well, if you bring if you bring the qualification, we'll add something to your salary. <laughs> <laughs> so you have, to, you have to pray. You have, you have to do all the Agbala you can. You know? <laughs> If you, if, if you can come back with the, with the qualification <laughs> pan, it means I'm like I'm waking up very early tomorrow to go and talk to Jordan Ayu. Very early. I'm going to be back to get the scoring boots on him. Ah, but is Andre, is Andre in Abuja? No, I didn't see him today. I didn't see him today. Maybe I'm he sure arrived. Maybe he'll tomorrow. come tomorrow. Yeah. I'm, sure he, yeah, I'm sure he'll come tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Let me come back in studio. But let me go to Harrison and take his prediction before I come back. Harrison, can you yeah. give me a prediction for tomorrow? Yeah, it's a win. But, um, one or two goals from Ghana. Ghana is winning. Wow. Ghana is winning for sure. Ghana wow. Is winning for sure. Who is scoring the goal? Kudus and Jordan. Kudus and Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Everybody says Jordan. Atapogu says Jordan. Uh, Daniel says Jordan. I say Jordan. You also say Jordan? Yeah. My MP called me and actually <laughs> told me that Ghana, it was going... I already tweeted the scoreline. 1-1. One, one. Yes. And, and Jordan would score. And he said Jordan would score. I didn't add that in the tweet, but that's what he said. Hey, everybody... Yes. And this man, Mohamed Sukwar, MP for uh, Sasala West. He doesn't follow football. He just called me out of nowhere. His malam just called me. He saw something this morning. If it doesn't happen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me Jordan is scoring. Well, uh... I said, don't be surprised, and it should be a motivation. What happened should be a motivation for him mm. to prove something. Mm. But um, if I have to predict who score, it will be difficult. But mm. Afina Jan, Afina Jan. For a first, for a first time, how did you make up Afina Jan? What did you make of his performance? Super. He has mm. a bright future. Mm. I spoke to Asama Jan. Mm. He told me the boy has a lot. What does Asama Jan think about his namesake? Uh, there are some things you, you also try if you get the opportunity who, to, to impact to him. impact on him and that is, there's the boys, something the John name the boy <laughs> he also actually they also come he, he also come from the same area he's a B A boy oh they are both from B yeah, yeah. yeah. The area so they are all from the same area so wow he, you shouldn't be surprised uh, apart from him I think that fact is to me I keep saying that we'll qualify mm. if you remember my show here we'll qualify now it should be a draw. That would be painful for the Nigerians. Me, I, me, I actually think... And we should score first. I think Pate will score a free kick. Pate... If he has the chance... Pate will not? be released in this game than yes. the Kumasi, the Kumasi yes. game. They didn't give him space. I think they wanted him to contain yes. and they prevent Nigerians him. from scoring. And even the Nigerians they didn't even give him space. If you want the game well. But they've been, they've been seeing they him. They never gave... They didn't, and the few spaces he had, look at the passes he gave. And those passes nearly gave us a goal. So you feel the, coach, the coach may get another defensive and play Pate in the... I think it was more of a, a tactical arrangement, yes. mostly because Baba Idrisu was given the opportunity to always withdraw and slot in yes. between the yes. two centre backs, backs to progress yes. the ball. And every time he withdraws, that the extra people, Nigerian midfielder is there to join yeah. up to tackle party. Mm. So, mm. so you realize that Baba Idrisu didn't even get a lot of passes to party. Mm. In that, so he, party wasn't able to impact the player as much as possible. So you think they will change that? They, they, they might change it will, that. It will change by default because, because now they need a goal. Nigerians will be attacking. Them. And so that's where we hope um, that space will be there for party to operate. And um, maybe if we want to talk, you see, I, we spoke about, I spoke about the fact that the guys are not under pressure. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that um, psychologically, motivation-wise, uh, mentally, we are ahead of the Nigerians. And then tactic, we have a good technical bench. Charlie, that, that team what, is what I expect them to do, mm. which I didn't like a little, was that the, the subs delayed. Substitutions took you too can't long to play come. games like this, mm. and after f and then then uh, by seventy by seventy minutes, minutes he had done all his stuff, but we did ours almost in the eightieth minute. That is what I pray and I wish and I hope that our coaches will do that because you can't keep a player when he repeats a mistake 
a coach mm. must react. When a player repeats a mistake, repeats it, repeats it, and you don't react, like people were talking but about. But we have a strong bench. Super. We do. Actually, we do. much stronger than this, the team yes. that started. Really? Especially yes. in the attacking area. Every area. Who, who else is good? Apart from Jump, um, um, the pencil boy. Joseph Pencil. He was super in the AFCON. Mm. And he's playing regular. And a very good goal The scorer. guy, the Bukari guy, Nant, Nant, oh, Nant. 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 He's playing and he played against um, PSG. And look at how he was. His team is And then he goes and comes. He's somebody who also does that. And then even in the attack, if Afena is not there, you have the other young guy too. What's his name? Kwesi Ritt. Kwesi Ritt and then the other one. The, the okay, that's one. Christopher and Chiege as well. And then Chiege guy. But now that you know you have confidence in Afena, you keep him, you give him the confidence, which we've done that. Now you can change the wingers. They will do a lot of runs. So if they, they get tired, change them early. That mm. is the only thing. But apart from that, technically and uh, tactically, I think we have a very good bench when mm. it comes to reading the game, trying to vary the game, trying to change our game plan to suit what we have. And like I keep you, I, I told you, if they, they, they try to be on the offensive more and party gets space, it's another plus for us, which you are saying that party can score from any angle. Yeah, party can score and from anywhere. If he gets that space and he can give that, the guy say, Boomy pass. He can give the pass. <laughs> 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 Boomy pass. Yeah. That pass the is a goal. Pass. Mm. Yeah. That pass is a goal. Mm. And if he gets that space because they want to score and we score first, which I'm that is what I can see. If we score first and we want to score first, and we should score first. Mm. If we score, f we are going to score first. Okay, not if. We are going to score first. Mm. And when we score first. And when we score first, there will be more for So Atapaku says 1-1. One, one. Harris Nafo says we'll score two. Uh, Jordan and... Um, I love, Kudus. I love, Kudus. I love the 1-1. One, one. Danny K says uh, Jordan will score. He said if we score first, we score three. You say 1-1. One, one. Yeah. And yeah. you say... Games like this, uh, Bernard, if... You will see more goals, then somebody will. There will be a problem in the team. So it will be a low scoring it's, game. Yes, because if the Nigerians lose concentration and they get frustrated, they will punish them. It's the same thing applies to us. Mm -hmm. If we also lose concentration and we go and concede early, we are. Let me trouble. ask a difficult question. If we don't qualify, will the FA stay with this technical team? The technical team was giving the mandate, this particular. Um, Team was given money for this, these two games. Just these two games. Then they so will, that we will have review time it. to review and then mm. take a long So, whatever happens, you look at their performance and yes. decide what to do. Yes, so that's the, the situation. Mm. Well, before you sleep, pray for the Black Stars. If you're watching this on Tuesday, the game is probably in an hour and a half. Let's keep believing that Ghana will fly to Qatar and they will make us proud. If we get to Qatar, I'm sure we'll do better than 2010 if we can get our act together because 2010 is still our best performance in a tournament. I've been speaking to a very crack team. I had all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, the, the Ghan one of Ghana's best, I mean, Harris Enafo, one of our quickest. Harris Enafo says we're going to win. I also had from Abuja, Daniel Cranton, who says he's going to tell Jordan to score so that he'll get his salary increased. We also had Atapoku from Kumasi. The, the, the Kumasi fans delivered 60,000. They've done their part. I had in studio Samalini Mado, who is the, an exco member of the Ghana Football Association and head of sports at City, Fentu Tahiru Fentu. Go Black Stars Go. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in Qatar 2022. Bye bye.